I'm Angelica Hicks and today we're going to be doing paper mache because I kind of thought what could everyone make with what have now become household staples and it's bizarrely an obvious choice. So what I'm going to do is take one glove then I am going to take either a toilet roll, a used one, cardboard paper roll um, and I'm going to be using this for either you know a forearm or the wrist and then the glove so it's going to be a helping hand I'm calling it not that it will be very helpful but you know ornamental and then paper towels or newspaper I kind of prefer paper towels um, and then you basically need to mix equal parts flour and water and then also scissors are useful for cutting up paper towel into strips one will measure out one third of a cup look at this very very accurate of course one third of a cup of flour in the mixing bowl and so we'll add a to our flour mixture we'll add a third of a cup of water and then what we want to do is just you know give this a real good mix don't know how best to show I guess I'll mix it first until you know you kind of get this paste it's kind of like I don't know if you guys made pancakes will kind of look like pancake batter um, except I wouldn't recommend making pancakes with it because uh, I don't think it would taste very good um, because it's kind of, you know, missing eggs and water instead of milk. Uh, but that's the kind of consistency you want, is a pancake batter consistency. Look, pasty, okay. So now I would recommend also a plate, because what, we'll want, what you want to do is submerge the kitchen towel, which I will cut into strips. Let me just blow up the glove quickly, let's do that. Okay, then you grab it and you kind of want to make it look actually like a hand and not have too much blown up at the end. So paper mache has different rounds. See what we'll do is we'll be paper mache the first layer onto here and here and we're going to be keeping them separate. The end effect will be like this. Alternately make a little guy, just a little wrist. You know, make, make a whole bunch of them. They look quite cool. Until we've done the first layer of paper mache, they won't be rigid enough to kind of stick together and it's just very frustrating because it will, you know, kind of fall everywhere. So, what we want to do now is we want to cut this up into kind of strips. This one, this piece, for example, we're actually maybe not going to want to mess with the size at all and maybe we want to just put it on straight away as it is because obviously you know this being the middle of a kitchen paper roll it fits perfectly round it submerge the kitchen roll in in our paste you see how it's got quite a lot of paste on it now obviously kitchen paper kitchen paper is very absorbent though so what we kind of want to do now is to transfer it to the plate so that we can try to distribute evenly. Oh wait, yes, sorry. I should also mention kitchen paper roll, kitchen, pa kitchen paper towel roll um, is two ply, I think is the word I'm looking for. So you want to separate the plies. And And then what we'll want to do is, okay, so we can leave this one in the bowl for now. And with this one, we kind of want to, so there's not too much of the paste, because otherwise it will be too gluey. So you just kind of want to evenly distribute the paste. I'm gonna try and show it closer. Evenly distribute the paste by spreading it all over. I mean, it still needs to be quite wet. 
but so when so when it's all kind of wet, you take the kitchen roll. So now this other piece that was the second ply of the one that we've just placed on there we're going to put over the top because on the first round, so the first day, you want to be making two, <clears throat> two layers, like two, like one layer and then the second, <laughs> I think that makes sense. Um, and, uh, and that's it because otherwise it won't dry properly. So you can then revisit it anywhere from 12 to 24 hours later. So this is the first. And it's fine if it tears a bit because then you just smooth it down and you basically just want to make sure that it's all very smooth. So like, smooth these bits down and also any excess glue you kind of want to... Okay, so smooth, smooth, smooth. Again, this is the first layer, so if it's not as, if it feels a little bit bumpy, which it definitely will feel when we start to paper mache the hand, it's all right because you're just going to build on the first layer. So I find it easier to separate the plies when they're a bit wet already. So like after I've dipped it in, I like separating them then because they come apart easier. Not sure why, I'm sure there's some science behind it, but. And then just shoving the other one back in to the glue. Put it, place it on the glove. I would recommend doing that part first, because it's easier. This is more of a complicated shape, but still, it, it's totally fine. And on this, you'll just want to make more of a mental note as to whether you, as to what layer you're on. Because it's very important that you don't do more than you can do between two and three layers on the first round. I recommend two. I think three is too many. And so on these bits, where that happens, I recommend just taking those scissors, again, very roughly, just cutting it, so that you don't have any bulked up areas. Here's another bit like that. Again, I'm just gonna cut it. Because otherwise, because what you don't want is to create, like, <clears throat> essentially wrinkles in the paper mache. And what you can do is you can then put these little bits in the gaps. Because I want to do it like that. Smooth it down. And underneath. Here we are. And now what you want to do is take the scissors and just cut so you release the thumb. Make sure that you wrap this bit around the thumb slightly. Shapes like this work well for the longer fingers and you just want to move and then wrap it up. And now you'll just want to snip off the top. I think it looks like a seam. That's okay. Tasty. Dip it. Once it's got enough on the tape on the plate, smush that around. Separate the ply. Make 
make sure it's not too wet. You, it basically wants to feel, you want it to feel slimy because you want the paper towel to absorb it all. So doing this for a while is quite good. Um, it needs to feel slimy, kind of like chicken skin or something. And now let's place it on. Layer two and a half for some of this bit that wrapped around itself. And already you see how much, how, how much less visible the blue of the glove is. Smoothing out all the... Really just make sure it's all smooth. Very important. Okay, now this we want to actually dip back in here because there wasn't really enough left over. And to make it really slimy. Also look, right now, I'm actually gonna decide to put this guy on like that. Cause there's no rule. No rule for how best to put it on. Whatever you think is best, just go with what you think. Let's wrap that round a bit. And now back to this side, because we do want to put a little bit there. And cut a little bit off it off. And place it on there. Brilliant. And now with that extra bit, I'm going to put on the side here because it fits rather perfectly. Now again, let's just make sure it's all flat. Okay, this is looking good. And now it's back to the fingers.
Oh no. Bah. And remember to snip in between the fingers if you feel like they're being constricted. You can just snip the kitchen towel that's in between the fingers. So this little piece is good for the little finger. And just if you want to wrap in at the tip of the finger, you just want to wrap it in so it's like, you know, if you're not gonna, if you, you don't have to snip it too much, you can also just wrap it in because remember that we will revisit um, for layers two and three. Seems like a good size for the second and fourth fingers. And don't worry too much about this. Obviously try to be smoothing down as you go along. However, we can always smooth down more just before leaving it to dry, which I will show you how to do because we are nearly done with layer one. One finger left. Layer one, looking good. So now we're ready to dry phase one of the paper mache. So what you wanna do is get a 
coat hanger, a clothes hanger, like a skirt one or trousers or whatever. Um, and what I find is useful because obviously the glove it has to the glove can't really stand upright while it dries, so it's easier to attach it to something so that it can dry without any of it being touching a surface. So what I I, I just I, I have a light that you know or, or you, you could also if you have a rail this bit use your brain you all have them uh, so take the coat, hang, coat hanger attach it to one side of this and then very useful the little bit that we had to um, seal to blow it up we want to attach that bit there and voila, hanging, drying, perfect. And you can also take this moment to see if there's any areas that you want to put any more, you know, um, any gaps or if you want to flatten some of it. I also recommend like maybe checking up on it every so often, checking up to see if you need to, just checking up to see that it's all, you know, drying in the place that you want it with no air bubbles. And you want to leave both of these items drying for anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. They need to be dry, dry, really dry. Not like, oh, this feels dry, like dry, dry to the touch. So after 24 hours, your pieces will be ready for round two of what we just did. So you want to place that in there and then you basically just want to paper mache the whole thing together repeating the previous steps. I would suggest doing about three rounds of that, so over the course of three days, and then your end result will look something like this. Hard, ready to be a decorative object, or you can paint it. Do whatever you want with it. It won't be much help, but it is a helping hand.